All right. Hey, Shalom to the elect. I want to start by giving all the praises, honor, and glory to whom it rightfully belongs, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh is the one of the world ignorantly calls God. Yah means He. Hawa means to be or exist. So Yahweh's name means He is or He to be or He exists. Bahashem means in the name. Ba means in. Ha means the, and Shem means name. And Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Messiah. Yahweh Shai is the one of the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Yah means he, and Yahweh Shai means save or deliver. Right? And Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are not so called white men, they're so called black men. All right? And Yahweh Shai's name means he is the savior or he is the deliverer. Baha Shem once again means in the name. Baha Kodash means holy spirit. Baha means spirit, and Kodash means holy. So I said all the praises, honor, and glory belongs to Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. That belongs to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, every well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. And this is um, a lesson pretty much going in, you know, to old bodies. When I say old bodies, I'm talking from, you know, post-salvation, all right? You know, so this lesson is going into old bodies, new bodies. The law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts, us being changed. Okay? And, yeah, man. Um, so, call hello, Yahweh Bashmi, I was shy, because I've, I've been wanting to do this lesson, you know, and something, I guess you could say, you know, miraculous happened a day or two ago, you know, because I've been wanting to do this lesson. But I know I had to go over some precepts and things. And pretty much um, some precepts that I went over, okay, some precepts that I had gone over, they, um, <clears throat> they, uh, you know, pretty much in a, in, in, in a sense, they wasn't like coming in my head. You know, at the time, but when I say something miraculous happened, I was telling the brothers how pretty much what, you know, a day or two ago, while I was dreaming and stuff, you know, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, he made me think of precepts as I was dreaming. And then I woke up, thought about it, you know, and the precepts line up with this lesson, okay? The precepts line up with this lesson, all right? And I'm thinking, wow, man, hello, y'all, bash me, i Now I feel complete enough to do this lesson. Okay? But, yeah, man, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, starting at verse 50. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Okay? You know, oh, and um, also the water to the brothers out there, you know, that I told, you know, and that um encouraged me, you know, after I told you about, you know, the Lord putting that precept sitting in my head, you know, about the um, you know, while I was dreaming, you know, the water to those brothers out there that encouraged me to do that to to make to uh, make the lesson. All right, First Corinthians fifteen and fifty one says, "Behold, I show you a mystery: we shall not all sleep." But we shall all be changed. All right, changed. Let me look at this word changed. How come the Christian church doesn't go into this? You know, they 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 think of it as, you know, like a rapture, you know. So Strong's G two thirty six Alasso. Alasso. Alasso, and it says to change to exchange one thing for another, to transform. To make different change, and that's true. You know, the the elect is going to be changed, man. All right. It says, verse fifty two: In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. All right. You know, and we're going to be changed when Yahweh Shai returns. That when Yahweh Shai comes back and beams up his elect like he said he would. That's when we're going to be changed real quick. Let me get, um, 
It's, it's the book of Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You see? Let me get another one. The book of 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All right, and this is going to, you know, those new bodies. It says, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Okay? So, a transformation of bodies is going to take place for a certain group of people. You know, ultimately, all the Israelites will, you know, in the end, you know. Let me say in the kingdom, okay? You know, but when Yahweh Shah returns, that remnant is going to have new bodies. So... Or let me see the you know the elect gonna have new bodies, but um here we go. First Corinthians fifteen and fifty-three. Bear with me just one second, Salakia. Should have expected Satan to start messing with me now. First Corinthians 15, 15 and fifty three. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. You know, and see, the thing is, you know, the um, the apostle Gabar, I believe he was going into saying how, you know, these new bodies are going to be incorruptible, or you know, meaning they won't get sick, etc. You know, you know, and other things, okay, because we're not going to have those problems in the new bodies, okay. Uh, let me look at let me look at this word immortality. Strong's G one ten, Athanasia, 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 and it says undying immortality everlasting. Okay, this is how you know, and this is how you know a change of place is going, a change like a change of bodies is going to take place. Okay, because these bodies we have. Are mortal. Let's look at the word mortal. Strong's G twenty three forty nine. Thanatos. 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 Liable to death. Mortal. Right. These current bodies that we have, these chains of darkness, are liable to death, man. Liable to die. Okay. You know. Bear with me one second. Let me just go over some. Look for a precept real quick. Bear with me. Abakwa Shah. get a specific point this is the book of second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 4 this is a good chapter second corinthians chapter, chapter 5 and verse 4 it says for we that are in this tabernacle do groan let me just look at this word tabernacle real quick Strong's G, 4636, Skenos. 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 This is a tabernacle, a tent. All right, it says, here, here's the point. Metaphor of the human body. This current body that we have in which the soul dwells as in a tent and which is taken down at death. All right, so in, this, in these current bodies, right, it says, for in this tabernacle we do groan, being burdened. See? 
being burdened. Let me just look at this word burdened. Strong's G916. Barreo. 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 It's the burden, way down, depressed. Burden, charge, heavy, press, right? So, how are we burdened in these bodies? You know, we're burdened with all types of things like ailments, demons attacking, diseases, injuries, etc. You know? That's what that's what it's going into. Okay, when it's just being burdened. And that's the point I wanted to get, you know. From the scripture, it says, for we that, in the, that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, okay? Now, with the new bodies, you won't have to, you know, you won't have no ailments. See, so that's how you know we're going to have different bodies, new bodies, okay? When Yahweh Shai returns, we're not going to have these same type of bodies. And then on top of that, slug you. You know, and on top of that, these current bodies we have are wicked, man. You know, these current bodies that we have are wicked, all right? Because these current bodies we have are liable to sin, too, okay? <clears throat> you know, um, so let me get that real quick. This is Romans, the seventh chapter. Apostle Paul goes into this, uh, man, Apostle Paul goes into this extremely well. Uh, Romans chapter seven and verse seven. Because what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Yahweh forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. I got to know here. So the law is in sin, but sin can only be if there's a law in place. Right? Wait one second. So I'm just looking for something. You know, and that's the thing with this flesh, okay? Um, I'm going to read all of this, but matter of fact, I'll just read verse 18. Romans 7 and 18 says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, right? In these corruptible bodies that we currently now have, all right? These current, these, these corruptible bodies in this flesh, all right. Well, it's no good thing, meaning that this flesh that we have is wicked and always wants to go off or sin. All right. Or do wickedness. OK. Because for to will is present with me. Right. You know, because, you know, you feel it. You know, your spirit wants to do is righteous in the eyes of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. You know, you want to you don't want to sin. All right. And even further, you don't want to you don't want to not pray. Let me say it again. You want to pray fast, study, etc. OK. But this flesh, these corruptible bodies, you know, is in the way sometimes. And the thing is, you know, to 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 win to win more battles over the flesh than you lose. All right, it says, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Okay, meaning this flesh, you know, causes me, you know, you to sin or do wickedness. Okay. That's another thing with these bodies that we currently have. Okay. You know, these current bodies, all right, these current bodies that we have are susceptible to sin as well. So you see how much of a low grade these current bodies we have are? You know, if you fall, you know, you possibly could break something, you know. You, you can sin, you, you, you can sin or, you know, you're pretty much, you're, you're pretty much programmed to sin with these bodies. The book of Romans chapter 8. In verse 20, for the creature, you know, creature just simply means creation, you know, goes in the meaning of creation, which man is. Man was created on the fifth day, as it says in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. All right. It says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. All right. So we were made to, you know, the Lord made it like this, that we're to go off and sin in his flesh. Okay. Not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. All right. Now, I want to get another scripture real quick. This is the book of Jude. Chapter one and verse seven. And it said, Slaki, not seven. Verse six, it says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, you know, angels talking about, you know, the spirits, you know, our spirits left the celestial body 
and came on the earth in human form. Okay. It says, but left their own habitation, you know, which is the spirit world, you know, in a celestial body. Okay. It says, hath he reserved in everlasting chains under darkness? All right. And everlasting chains of darkness is this flesh. Our spirits are imprisoned in this, in these corruptible bodies, you know. And that's why we won't go jump back to the book of Romans. Chapter seven, you read about it and go into it. Then Apostle Paul says in verse 24, it says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You know. And the point I want to make from that is Apostle Paul, he's saying, who shall deliver me? Think about it. If you have a chain, right, that means you're stuck to something. Okay. And we, us in this flesh, you know, we're stuck here until the Lord says it's time, you know, for us to, us to die. All right. Or, or until, you know, you know or until we get changed. Okay. For the elect. All right. But pretty much, you know, we, this flesh, is, this flesh goes off. Okay. This flesh is sinful. All right. And. You know, we're, what's the name? We are, um, like I said, the creature was sub made subject to vanity, you know? So as much as we don't want to go off in this flesh, we're, we're still going to. You see, we're stuck to going off in this flesh. You see? Like a chain, we're stuck to going off of the, in this flesh. So this chain's of darkness is actually the flesh, Okay? Not no fallen angels. You know? Let me get back to Jude. Jude chapter 1 and verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness. All right? Unto the judgment of the great day. And that's the day of the Lord. And on that day, we'll be freed and, and you know, released from these bodies. Okay? You know? Going back to 1 Corinthians 15, all right? It says, uh, verse, matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter, and verse 53 says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Right. So, yeah, that's going to come when Yahweh Shai returns. Right. You know, as Apostle Paul said, the first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, those are the elect that died, you know, already. Or by the time Yahweh Shai returns, are going to be on the chariot first. And then those are the elect that are alive and remaining. OK. From all over the, around the earth, they're going to be beamed up on the chariot. OK. After. All right. They're going to be on the chariot second. OK. When Yahweh Shai returns. All right. And it's that immortality. Now, let's get this real quick. Okay, and we understand immortality means undying, you know, something that can't die, right? So, let's just get this real quick. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So, sin is when you break the laws, right? The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But to get the Yahweh's eternal life through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Lord. You see? But it said the wages of sin is death. So what you get for sinning or breaking the laws is death. Right? So we gotta understand something. It's the book of Jeremiah 31 and 31. It says, Behold, the days that come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. With the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. So, like, you bear with me one second. It says, so like, yeah, it says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, and the day that I took them by the hand and bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I wasn't husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law. In their inward parts. Bear with me one second. Salakia. This is Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 
not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I wasn't husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. It will be their power and they shall be my people. You see, so it says the law stretches commandments and the new covenant. This is the new covenant, all right? That's only going to be made with the Israelites, as it says in verse 31. All right, it's going to be put within the inward parts of the Israelites, okay? The law, statutes, and commandments are going to be written on the inward parts of the Israelites. They're going to be put within us. So pretty much what this means is the Israelites will keep the laws, statutes, and commandments 100%. Like, they'll never go off, okay? It's going to be like second nature to them, all right? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. This is the reason, and so... Pretty much, if sin, if the wages of sin is death, if what you get for breaking the law is death, then that should ultimately ask you, well, what's the opposite? You know, what what if I keep all the laws? What if I keep the laws perfectly? Then you don't die. You see? But here's the thing. Once again, we're in this flesh. We're in this corruptible flesh currently. Okay? And... This flesh is programmed to sin, as we just went through. So Yahweh Bahashim was shy is is literally going to take him, if, you know, is 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 going to take for him to change our bodies, okay? You know, it's going to take for him to change our bodies. Well, well, let me say like this is this is this is what's gonna have to happen, all right? You know, we need to be changed, all right? You know, this is this is this is what's gonna happen, man. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah is going to change our bodies. All right. You know, we won't have to die anymore. We won't have to sin anymore, us Israelites. All right, because the heathen nations they're gonna have these uh these these type of bodies we currently have in the kingdom. We're not gonna have these bodies anymore. All right. In the, in the, uh in the kingdom. All right. And you know things are gonna trickle down to the point. As Apostle Gabar said, you know, pretty much we're going to have what? Perfect teeth, perfect hair, perfect vision, you know, etc. man. Just going to be perfection, okay? We're going to be looking real, hey, man, and imagine our women, you know, <laughs> in the kingdom. And they're going to be looking good, man, you know? But you see, it's going to take a, a, a change, of bodies, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to change our our bodies, okay? So you won't have to be burdened like we are in this flesh. And that's the thing. In this flesh, you know, we go through those things, okay? But in a, in, a, in a new flesh to come, you know, we won't have to, we won't be burdened, you know? We won't be, you know, getting ailments and things, okay? The Israelites, in, the Israelites period in the kingdom of heaven, receive any ailments or anything like that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 4. It says, And Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. See? Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. This is on all levels. Okay? So in, even, you know, so among the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven, ain't going to be no more death and pain, you know, and all that. It's need no sorrow. It says for the former things are passed away. Okay. And there's a precept I literally just thought of just now. Thing that I wanted to get. Little and it'll come back to me. But <clears throat> oh, yeah. This is the book of Isaiah. And this is also, you know, something else is gonna go down in the kingdom. It's the book of Isaiah. So, you know, so we're gonna have the law, statutes, commandments, and inward parts. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 20, and verse 21. Thy people, the Israelites, also shall be all righteous because the Lord is going to give them the law. The Lord is going to put the law, statutes, and commandments in their inward parts. So they're going to be all righteous. So we're never going to sin. You see? And we already went through the way, you know, pretty much the fact that, you know, we're, you know, going to need to have our bodies changed. Okay? So here, and then you read in the verses up, all right? This goes into how, what, the kingdom of heaven, you know, on earth, 
pretty much you could tell that this is going to be on earth when you go into the verses above. Some of the verses above the kingdom of heaven going to be on earth. All right. So in the kingdom is saying that people shall also shall be all righteous. And we understand once again, we're going to have to have that new flesh in order for this to be. Ha to, uh, to, to, we're going to have to have those new bodies in order for this to take place. So literally, the, and this is going to be among the Israelites. Why? Because the laws, statutes, and commandments, the new covenant is only for the Israelites. Let me, let me say like this. Laws, statutes, and commandments being put in our inward parts is only for the Israelites. Okay, then that, the whole new covenant is only for the Israelites. All right? And we're going to have new bodies when that new covenant is activated. Okay? So, what you can grasp from this is that the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians, all right, on their father's side, you know, those who are those, whose fathers are those nationalities, okay, you know, bear me one second, you know, they, um, they're, what's the name, and it said all, you know, so, all the Israelites in the kingdom is going to be righteous. But pretty much the point I'm trying to make is on earth, you're going to have the, the Israelites walking around in those new bodies on earth, man. Amongst the heathen nations, which are going to be in um the corruptible bodies. All right. You're going to have Israelites in perfect bodies, man. You know, perfect and powerful bodies. Okay. Let me get this as well. Let me get this real quick. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 40. It says, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Okay, so there are also celestial bodies. All right, and these the celestial bodies are the type of bodies the angels have. Okay, and and let's just, you know, break some of those words down. All right. Let's go into some of them words. Salakia, Satan fucking with me again, man. Damn, bro. Satan getting fucking annoying. First Corinthians 15. And verse 40. Okay. Celestial. Strong's G, 2032. Epuranias. Epuranias. It says, Existing in heaven, things that take place in heaven, the heavenly regions. You know, uh, heaven itself, the boat of the most high and the angels, the lower heavens of the stars, the heavens of the clouds, the heavenly temple or sanctuary of heavenly origin or nature. You see? So it's talking about the type of bodies that angels have. When it says celestial, then it says in bodies terrestrial. And the terrestrial bodies are the type of bodies that mankind has. It's lucky. He's not even saying it. But oh well. See, it says existing upon the earth, earthly terrestrial. And you see under the Strong's definition, it says worldly, physically, uh, it says normally earthly and earth terrestrial. You see? But here's the thing. All right, it says there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. You see, so the glory of the celestial is one. So those celestial bodies that angels have, they don't need food. You know, they don't have a desire for sex. You know, they don't get tired as well. OK. You know. It says in the glory of the terrestrial is another, you know, so the bodies that mankind has, you know, these bodies we currently have, we eat food, have sex and drink, etc. So those two bodies alone, you know, they are two, they, they, they you know, the celestial body type of bodies that angels have and the type of bodies that man has, they, you know, the glory of them is different. You know, they, 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 they do different things. Okay. This explains why angel, um, you know this is the book of 2nd Kings chapter 19 verse 35 it says and it came to pass that night that the angel of Yahweh went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians in hundred 
four score and five thousand, which is 185,000, 185,000 Assyrian men. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. You see? You know, and that's something an angel can do. Okay? You know? <clears throat> but here's the thing, though. You know, when we get those new bodies, all right, you know, we're going to have... It, it's not going to... You know, it, it's pretty much going to be like a... Like, you know, both. Okay? We're going to have... We're going to be able to do the things that a celestial body can do as well as the things that a terrestrial body can do, okay? Because what? We're not going to get tired in the kingdom, okay? You know? Let me get that scripture again. Let me just look at the note I have for it real quick. Celestial bodies, those celestial bodies don't need food, have a desire for sex, they don't get tired as well, you know, etc. And, and more things, you know? You know? <clears throat> but... Here's the thing, you know, once again, we're going to have, we're going to have a pretty much a body that, you know, can do both, you know, because what in the kingdom of heaven, we are going to have sex and eat and drink. Okay. Look, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. We're going to have to have women. And this is in Isaiah the 60th chapter. See, this is going to be on earth. The kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth. Once again, you're reading this chapter. All right. For example, verse 14, Isaiah 60 and matter of fact, no, verse 10. It says, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. You see, so the heathen nations are going to have to build up our kingdom. You know, if, it, if this wasn't talking about on earth, how the, how the hell are they going to build it in the, in, the, in, the, in the third heaven where the heavenly father dwells? This is going to be on earth. You see, the heathens are going to build up our kingdom. Just like we had to build America, they're going to build our kingdom up. Okay? This is going to be on earth. You see? And then it says, like, people also shall be all righteous because the law, statutes, and commandments are going to be in our in the inward parts of the Israelites. In the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And then after that, verse 22 says, little ones shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. So, yes, the Israelites are going to have these new bodies down here on the earth. Okay, and they're going to reproduce. All right, it says the same thing in Ezekiel the thirty-sixth chapter. You know, that I will multiply. I will multiply men upon you. Okay, you know, so we are going to have sex. So you see, and we're gonna we're gonna be able to do these different things. Okay, you know we're gonna be able to um, you know, there's a lot of things we're gonna be able to do in the kingdom. Fly. We're gonna have spiritual powers. Okay. All of that, you know, it's gonna, we're going to be able to do the thing, you know, things a celestial body can do as well as the things of a, a, a terrestrial body can do. You know, we're going to have sex. We're going to eat. OK, and drink. All right. Think about it. We're going to have slaves, you know, because in Isaiah, the 14th chapter. All right. It says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So we're gonna the Israelites are gonna rule over the heathen nations in the kingdom of heaven. All right. And you know, think about it. You have a slave, you know, and we're gonna have, you know, the earth, you know. Your brother's gonna have vineyards and things, so think about it. You know, you're gonna have slaves making you wine and stuff, so we're gonna be able to drink and all of that in the kingdom, man. You know, so and this, you know, so it's it's gonna be a change of bodies that take place, okay? You know, and these bodies, like Apostle Gabar said, <clears throat> are of a higher grade, okay? We're gonna think about it, man. You know, you get up in the morning, you might wake, wake up all slow, your thoughts ain't there, you know, feeling like shit. Sometimes, okay, or even just throughout the day, you know, you get tired and stuff or, you know, different things. You know, well, we're not going to, we're not going to feel like that. You know, we're going to, you know, like, like, we're going to have energy, okay? You know? It, it, it's it's going to be beautiful, man. You know, we're not, we're going to feel good in the kingdom, all right, in our new bodies perfect we're never going to sin anymore we're going to be righteous it's going to be and it's going to be a righteous rulership you see
under Yahweh Shai. All right. You know, and this is what's coming, man. You know, this is this is this is what's coming. You see, and we're getting closer and closer to 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 when Yahweh Shai returns and makes this happen. You know, because it's only gonna happen when Yahweh Shai returns. All right. So, <clears throat> um. Trying to see if there's any more scriptures I want to get. You know. Um, oh yeah. Real quick, back in the book of Jude, chapter one and verse six, it says, "And the angels which kept not their first estate." Slacky, slacky. Bear me one second. I gotta get some precepts. Jeez. Book of Jude, chapter 1 and verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but of their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. You know, <clears throat> in the day of the Lord, and on that day, you know, we'll be freed and released from, the, from these bodies, right? So here's the thing, because normally when a person dies, right, I believe the elder Kazak was going into this, you know, bringing this, you know, what I'm about to say out, but pretty much when a person dies, you know, you go back to the spirit world, you know, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Yahweh who gave it. Let me get one more precept regarding that. Ecclesiastes 3, starting from verse 19, down to 20, 21. It says, <clears throat> Salakia, For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, which is death. As the one dies, so died the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all his vanity. Verse 20, all go into one place, all of the dust again, and all turn the dust again. Verse 21, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward to the spirit world, you know? And they say it's the spirit of a righteous man, they say it's the spirit of a wicked man. Both righteous and wicked, all right, men go to the spirit world after death. It says in the spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth, you know. And so animals die; they don't go back to the spirit world. They come right back, you know. Reincarnation. So the process is, you know, you're born, you live, you die, you go back to the spirit world, and you get reincarnated. You know, real quick to prove that, the book of Ecclesiastes, the first chapter and the ninth verse: "The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be; and that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun." Okay, you know, so we'll read verse 10. Is there anything wherever may be said? See, this is new and it has been it has been already of old time, which was before us. All right. So it said there's no new thing under the sun. You know, and the main thing this is talking about or the primary thing it's talking about is man. The thing that has been is man because Ecclesiastes chapter six and verse 10 that which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Read that again. That which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that hath been. What do we just read that hath been, man? All right. It is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Okay. So the process is, you know, once again, you're born, you grow up, you know, you live. You know, you, you know, you die, you go back to the spirit world, you know, and the thing is, when you go to the spirit world, all right, you get judged by the Lord. I don't have to go, I don't go into that right now, but yeah, you know, you go back to the spirit world and you get reincarnated, right? <clears throat> and you live out and you live again. Okay. But the thing is, that's going to come to an end. That cycle for the nation of Israel is going to come to an end because we're all going to be eventually all the Israelites are going to be living forever. Okay? So for the nation of Israel, that cycle is going to come to an end. Revelation 21 and 4. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. They ain't going to die no more. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You see? So yeah, man. You know? We're going to have them new bodies. We need those new bodies, man. That's just horrible, you know? Man. And the thing is, 
another thing, Apostle Gabar was saying, like, in these new bodies, we're not going to need, you know, we're going to have, you know, because what Yahweh Shah said in what the book of St. John chapter 14 and verse 2, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So Yahweh Shah is saying, you know, in his, in his father's house are many mansions. And we know those mansions are planets. Okay. So we would have to get there somehow, right? You know, well, think about Apostle. One thing Apostle Gabar said is we wouldn't need a space apparatus to uh, to visit these things, okay? You know? Think about this. We wouldn't need no spaceship. We wouldn't need no astronaut suit. We could literally, you know, with the new bodies, we could literally just go out there, okay? And these bodies, current bodies, we die trying to go into outer space, you know, without something, Okay? But what does scripture say? <laughs> First Corinthians 15 and 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So we're going to be living forever. We're never going to be able to die again once, you know, we get those new bodies. You see? So it's like. You know, we, 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 well, it's not like, but we won't need, you know, and we won't, we won't need really anything to go into outer space. We'll be able to just take off from the earth and go into outer space, fly. We will be able to fly in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. We'll be able to fly. Best believe it. All right. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, man. All right. You know, I wanted to get into this lesson, you know, so pretty much. As a recap, you know, Yahweh Shai is going to come and change, you know, our bodies. Oh, you know, because there's more because Yahweh Shai, he, he coming back, man. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Starting at verse 11, it says, And after three days and a half, which is 350 years, the spirit of life from Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai entered, it, entered into them, you know. So this is, you know, this is why you see Israelites waking up to the fact that they're Israelites. It says, And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Right. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And that cloud is actually a so-called UFO. You see, it's the book of Psalms, chapter 104 and verse three. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh the clouds his chariot. All right. So. A. You know, sometimes in the scriptures, you know, where you see clouds, it's actually talking about a chariot, you know, or a so-called UFO. And the waters is going to, you know, the, the, the ionosphere, the stratosphere, okay? It says, walketh upon the wings of the wind because those so-called UFOs, you know, they fly, okay? Literally, what else could that be? When you when you hear who walketh upon the wings of the wind, what else could that possibly be? It's talking about a so-called UFO, all right? So you go back to Revelation 11th chapter. All right. And verse 11, it says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Okay. Verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Okay. You know, and the thing is, so they're going to send up. To have, they're gonna they're gonna get beamed up as Yahweh Shah said Matthew twenty four, verses thirty to thirty one. All right. Yahweh Shah is gonna you know and Yahweh sit in a cloud you know, Yahweh Shah is coming back with the chariots. All right. Tells you that in Revelation one and seven. Okay. You know. So. When they get on these when they when, you know elect get on this chair when the elect get on the chariot. You know, or chariots, you know, they're going to, hey, they are, um, <clears throat> you know, their, their, their bodies are going to change. Okay. Their bodies are going to change. No more sin. All right. Perfect bodies. Perfect. Yes. You heard me correctly. Perfect. Perfection. Okay. Let me, um, bear me just one second.
perfect it says having all on google perfect perfect having all the required or desirable elements qualities or characteristics as good as it is possible to be <laughs> absolute complete make something completely free from faults or defects or as close to such a condition as possible and you have hey ain't nothing too hard for you how about me how the lord can do anything he wants and he's going to make us completely free from faults or defects completely we're going to be perfect man okay let me get uh the etymology online and look at the word perfect in here perfect it says early 15th century classical correct classical correction of middle english perfect it says flawless ideal also complete, full, finished, lacking in no way. See? From old French parfait, finished, uh, completed, ready. You know? It says from per, meaning completely. This is in combination, combined in form of facete, to make, to do. So it's to, to you know, something that's, com that's complete. Okay, to do something completely or to make something completely. So the Lord is going to make us perfect, bro. All right. Who the, who wouldn't want this? Okay. This is and this is only for the Israelites, not no other heathen nations. Okay. Should even even the, the Israel even the Jakes, the so-called Black Spanish Native Americans that are Christians, that are go die hard for the other nations. You know they they themselves are going to be perfect. In the kingdom of heaven because they're going to come back as newborn babes in the kingdom you know in their right mind all right so yeah you know every day we're getting closer man every day we're getting closer bro so you know you brothers man stick in there hold hold on to your faith okay hold on man because we almost up out of here bro so lord within this lesson was that a fine i want to give all the praises honor and glory to whom rightfully belongs which is yahweh b'hashem yahweh shai b'hashem rechakudash Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, never well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect. Peace, which in Hebrew is Shalom. So Shalom to the elect.